uh, word by word translation and uh, the translation in the purport. Uh, what is Evam Bahu Vida Yagna Vitata Brahmana Mukhe Karma Jan Vidhi Tan Sarvan Evam Gyatva Moksha Se Evam Bahu Vida Yagna Vitata Brahmana Mukhe Karma Jan Vidhi Tan Sarvan Evam Gyatva Moksha Se Evam Bahu Vida Yagna Vitata Brahmana Mukhe Karma jana vidhi tan sarvam evam yatva moksha se. Beautiful words, the synonyms. Evam das bahuvidha, various kinds of yagna sacrifices, vitataha are spread. Brahmana of the Vedas, mukhe, through the mouth. Karma Jan, born of work. Vidhi, you should know. Tan, them. Sarvan, all. Evam, thus. Nyatva, knowing. Vimoksha, say, you will be liberated. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Jaya Prabhupada. All these different types of sacrifice are approved by the Vedas. And all of them are born of different types of work. Knowing them as such, you will become liberated. Perfect. Different types of sacrifice as discussed above are mentioned in the Vedas to suit the different types of worker. Because men are so deeply absorbed in the bodily concept, these sacrifices are so arranged that one can work either with the body, with the mind, or with the intelligence. But all of them are recommended for ultimately bringing about liberation from the body. This is confirmed by the Lord here with, from his own mouth. Right. So we'll uh, chant our prayers. Please feel free to join. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Akshurun Militam Yena Tashmai Sri Guruve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Padamayam Sadhati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha, Shri Rupam Sagarajatam, Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam, Sadhavaitam, Savadhutam, Parijana Thaitam, Sai Krishna Chaitanya Devam. Shri Radha Krishna Padam, Sahagana Lalita, Shri Vishakhan Vitam Shri. Shri Krishna Karana Sindhu, Dinavandhu Jagatpate. Gopesha Gopika Kanta Shri Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vishivanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vancha Kalpata Rubhyasya Vipath Hindu Vya Evacha Patita Nam Bhavne Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhaktarunda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Nama Om Vishnupadaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesa Sunyavadi, Archata de Shatarane. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Everyone coming here on a Saturday evening. Every day, one verse of Bhagavad Gita, reciting half or the whole of the chapter. It's so amazing.
and so purifying. So this is like yajna that we are performing Bhagavad Gita yajna every day, chanting and reciting and discussing. Um, let me share my um, presentation. Okay, so um, okay. one thing is, uh, so in terms of the timing, uh, we have uh, now entered into the another month, Margasisha month. The, the Karthik month is, is finished yesterday and we had one full month of uh, reciting of Damodarashtakam, offering lamb to, to Shiva. Yeshoda Damodar, Radha Damodar, going to the temple, performing some extra devotional services, chanting some extra rounds, and uh, wonderful association of devotees, so many beautiful things happening. I feel like a little bit of um, gap this morning, and there was uh, no offering of lamb. But then here, you know, Srila Prabhupada has given us a program that, that keeps us engaged in devotional service all through the year, every day. So now we, we had uh, His Grace Santaranga Prabhu yesterday uh, giving a talk on verse number 30 in the previous verse. And he also discussed about the, the, uh, the Sangeetan book distribution uh, month starts. And the devotees go out and uh, door to door, street to street, town to town, village to village, everywhere, distributing this transcendental literature that Srila Prabhupada has given us. So there's another exciting month beginning from today. Uh, and, uh, and obviously devotees are once again fully enthusiastic to, to get engaged in, in that service. Um, so in terms of uh, where we are with, with the Bhagavad Gita, um, this verse 32, uh, we've been discussing, um, or Krishna has been describing various types of sacrifices uh, that we were seeing verse, from verse 25 onwards after the Brahma, 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 uh, Brahma, no, what is that? Brahma, it's a beautiful verse. From that verse, Onward, I'll put that verse again. Marna Brahma with Brahma, Brahma. That's that. Yes, Brahma, 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 Vir, Brahma, Gna, Brahma, Gna, Hutam, Brahma, Eva, Te, Te, Gantavya, Brahma, Karma, Samadina. So many Brahma, 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 Brahma. This is the, the absolute truth. A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered of this is of the same nature. So, um, so it's about any sacrifice. Uh, there are four elements that we will discuss. So I was thinking maybe summarize uh, where we are with the chapters, uh, what we've been doing in chapter four. So, uh, so we had the, the chapter three that discussed about the Nishkam Karma Yoga and Lord Krishna then um, started off with his own position as to he had given the same knowledge to to Sun God Yuswan, the Yuswan gave it to Manu and Manu gave it to Ikswaku. Likewise, in the parampara, Evam Parampara Praptam, the knowledge has been transmitted from one to the next to the disciple, the disciple, the disciple, likewise. And uh, we are all very fortunate to have received the same knowledge uh, from Sri Prabhupada in the, in the same Guru Parampara. And uh, as Krishna was saying this uh, about his parting this knowledge to, to Sun God, Arjuna had a doubt. 
and um, and he says, oh, hang on, like you, Arjun and Krishna, you know, they were of similar age, and Arjun's asking a question on behalf of us. Obviously, he knows the position, but this Bhagavad, he knows the Bhagavad Gita will be here, you know, for a very very long time until the next time Lord comes, and uh, have to re. I said the dharma and re re um, re uh, I'll say replay this knowledge. Uh, you ask this question: How come you know you explain this to sun god? That was millions of years ago. So that Krishna clarifies this position that you know um, many many births have passed of yours and mine. You don't remember everything, but I do uh, remember. So. Then Krishna also explained about the Janma Karma Chame Devyam, Evam Yo Viti Tatvata, Tatva Deham Punar Janma. No. So, what's the word? Sorry, can anyone even say? Janma Karma Chame Devyam, Evam Yo Viti Tatvata. Tatva Deham Punar Janma. Nice. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, such, this is the this is the beginning of the transcendental knowledge. So this, if anyone, Krishna proclaims it, anyone understands the Janma Karma, his birth and his activity is divine. He will not take the birth again. So this is the one of the, and there are, this, this is the main transcendental knowledge that everyone is trying to, to understand. His divine birth and his divine activities. And other transcend what is the what are the transcendental knowledge that we are learning actually? The subject matter is transcendental knowledge. Can anyone say what is that we are trying to understand? What is this knowledge? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes, Mother. We're trying to find you know our constitutional position. Yeah. And we're asking for questions. So who am I? Why am I here? And what is my purpose in life? That's very good. That's a very good answer. Anything else that Krishna is trying to give us here? Anyone else? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Mataji. Um, I think it's a uh, transcendent knowledge is just uh, to know what the body and what the soul is and what our relationship with Krishna. Very we nice. are the eternal servant of Krishna. Very nice. This is the, the uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that all the scriptures basically have three aspects the Sambandh, Vidhe, and Prayojan. Sambandh is the first aspect that is for a living entity to understand their relationship with Krishna. So once we understand what is our relationship with Krishna, then we start acting on behalf on, on, on that basis. And that is our Vidhe. And religion is the goal. So once we are, we understand the relationship, we act on that relationship, and that, then the what is the end goal of that is to we love Krishna. We start to love right. Krishna, loving service to Krishna. That's it. That's, thank you so much. And uh, uh, can also Krishna is explaining the you know they explain the, the three aspects of karma, vikarma, and akarma. And what is akarma? We know what is karma, the, 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 the good act. We good act. Is the bad, bad is the bad act. What is our karma? Why is it Say that again, sorry. Sorry, Mata, what is karma? Our karma, sorry. Krishna Prabhuji, is it a transcendent? There's a service we do for Krishna. Yes. So every every act that we perform in this material world has either a a good reaction or a bad reaction, depending on what we are doing and how we are doing with our intention. So what happens if we perform a good deed? We we get a good result of that. We perform a bad deed, we perform, we get a bad result of that. And the you know the the height of good karma is like the there are some people who do karma kandas and all they want to go to the heavenly planets. 
And there are people who do really, really bad hacks. They go to the lower planets for the system. And the cycle just goes on. So someone who's just only doing good karma, you know, like charity or uh, giving some knowledge, or, you know, which is material knowledge in that sense. Uh, but he is a good person, so he's living in the uh, mode of goodness, performing good activities, and he has perfected that goodness, then he may go to the higher planetary system. And then is not working as for the Sorry, someone is mm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if uh, someone is, you know, we see so many horrible acts also, you know, people are being killed on the name of religion, or there is this uh, mass animal slaughter, and so much, so much, so much bad karma going on, but the, their destination is, is going downwards to the hellish planets. So someone can, can go up or someone can go down, but the cycle goes on and on. And then again birth and again death. So again, people engage in the material, or we will engage in the material activities. Again, we will either get good result or bad result. But to get out of this cycle of good and bad, we perform everything on behalf of Krishna or as a service to Krishna. Because Krishna, can then take away the reaction of that. So we don't get any reaction of any deed that we perform. That is called a karma. That is the fundamental knowledge that we are trying to learn. So how to do that? So someone said, we understand the relationship. We form the relationship and the, on that relationship, we act on the relationship and then we perform a karma. That means no reaction. So that is the... Um, that is what devotees do. That is what we've been uh, trying to learn how our acharyas and guru parampara are teaching us and how we can uh, how to dovetail all our activities in Krishna consciousness. So Krishna consciousness, so first we become conscious. So how do we become conscious? That we are aware of what we are doing. In today's situation is that most people are not even aware because they either have no knowledge or they never think. And no knowledge, no thinking, no awareness means animal life. So, uh, so we become conscious in the sense we, we become aware of what we are doing. This is the, the, the gift that we get from Krishna in one sense. So on day-to-day -day affairs that we do, we meet so many people, some of us are working, some of us are home, but we, no matter where we are and what position we are, we have to deal with the world, the material world. And when we deal with the world and we start to observe how the material nature is working, how my own mind is working, how the others are working, and then we start to become aware of the situation or the external then we become conscious. And then further to that, when we start to see Krishna in all situation, whether it is with us or, in the, or we start to see Krishna in every living entity also. So Krishna is within everyone's heart. Do we agree? Is he in the heart of a bad karmi or a, or a insect or animal in everyone's heart there is Krishna. Do we agree that? Yes, Prabhuji. So, when we become conscious, then we are aware of what's happening and we become Krishna conscious then we see how Krishna is working through his energy. And then we become Krishna conscious. So there was one person uh, um, a reporter asking uh, Prabhupada that have you seen nothing? This is uh, or maybe devotee. I'm probably paraphrasing it, but something around this. He says, "Have you seen Krishna, or do you Krishna?" Uh, Prabhupada says, "Do you not see? Like if you see outside, if you see the, the, the how the world is functioning, how the, um, the 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 sun is providing light and the water is coming and there is air, oxygen, everything is working perfectly. 
when we see how everything is working in order, we see Krishna is, is, is nice. Krishna's power and he's working behind everything and he's in everyone's heart. So we become Krishna conscious. And in that relationship, when we start to act, then we start to think, what does Krishna want? And uh, what will please Krishna? Then we start to perform activities in Krishna consciousness and that is all a karma. So for the pleasure of Krishna, when we do our activities, we perform a karma. So that is the transcendental knowledge we should or we are trying to understand how it, how uh, that can be done. And uh, Krishna also explained the division of society based on guna and karma. So uh, chaturvanya, chaturvanya, maya system, guna karma vivagarsa. So there are four uh, divisions based on the guna. Uh, what is that? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. The Brahmana, so, so, and then there are four based on Varna and Ashram. Ashram is what he explained. Varna, sorry, Varna he explained. Ashram is again, there is Ash. Brahmachari. Brahmachari, Garistha. Varna Prastha and Sanyasa. Yeah, these are Sanyasa. the four different types. Um, then, uh, after explaining all that, then Krishna starts to explain the various types of sacrifices. That's what we've been doing for nearly uh, more than a week now, eight or nine days. And today we are almost almost coming to the end of uh, Krishna summarizing the whole thing uh, by saying what? That uh, all these different types of sacrifices are approved by the Vedas and all of them are born of different types of work. Knowing them as such, you will become liberated. So he's explaining to Arjun and also be explaining to us. This is one of the, the beautiful things that someone explained, uh, uh, revealed to me, and it really works is uh, when Krishna gives the instructions, we have to we have to think that it is actually he's telling us. And Prabhupada's purpose, there are so many instructions that comes. When we try to put ourselves in there and see this is all happening with me. So, so we become that receiver of the knowledge. If in, in that mood, if we read and we listen or we hear, it really makes an impact. And the, the knowledge goes straight in, into the heart. And this is my personal experience. I think you can all also try. Uh, you know, when he says, uh, so for, because men are so deeply absorbed in the bodily concept. So if I read that, and because we are, or I am so deeply absorbed in the bodily concept, these sacrifices are arranged so that I can work either with the body, with the mind, or with the intelligence. But all of them are recommended for ultimately bringing about liberation. So kind of bring ourselves in the picture and take the instruction as personal instruction. And then we see the, the difference in the, you know how it affects our heart and soul. It is very purifying. I don't know, maybe someone from already doing it, but uh, I experienced that it was really, really powerful. So, uh, in terms of sacrifice, so these are the different types of sacrifices. We we know that the four elements of sacrifice. There is a, a contribution. So, in whatever sacrifice, we will go through that once again. So something is being parted with. So something is being contributed. And then there is a process of that consumption. Uh, whether it is a Dhyana Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga or whatever it is, there's a process, defined process of that. And then there is a person who is performing the sacrifice, it's called contributor. And then there is a result. So this is all the four aspects or elements of sacrifice. Yeah. And with these four uh, aspects, if you look at these sacrifice, it will start to make more sense to us. So what's happening in the first verse that Krishna started to explain that sacrifice, first sacrifice was demigod worshippers. So why demigod worshippers? Why there are demigod worshippers? 
Why do people worship demigods? For material benefits. Yes. But they can also get material benefits from Krishna or can they not? They can, right? Krishna says in Bhagavatam, Akama Sarva Kama Va, Moksha Kama Va Dharadi. So he says in Bhagavatam, also there is a verse, and say, whether you have desire or you have no desire, you should always worship Krishna. But there are, Krishna also explains in the later chapters, there is this tendency of uh, you know, individuals who would, who wants quick results, you know, we are worshiping quick results, and obviously temporary results. So, the demigods are easy to please, and somebody has also explained that it, it is the it is the, the duty of demigods to, to give the benediction to someone who's worshiping them. So, otherwise, you can imagine all these uh, big big demons like Hiranyakashipu or Ravan, and they performed demigod worships, and they got such so much power. You know, how did they get so much power? Because you know, demigods have been given are authorized to, to give benedictions. At the same time, they're obliged. It's like a, someone explaining like this, like you go to a, a store and you have a currency. Uh, so let's say you have some pounds or something. And if you, someone is opening, a, has opened a shop and they're displaying something, it's costing four pounds or five pounds, whatever. If you have that currency, you pay that, you get it. So they're obliged to sell. They can't say, well, that this shop is not for sale, or maybe this item is not for sale. If they have a shop, they have to give. Same way, if someone is performing the austerities and they're paying the price for that, then demigods are obliged to, to give them in return. So, so people do that. The currency is, is the, just like we discussed, you know, going to the higher planetary system. What is the currency for going to the higher planetary system? Anyone? Like in this world, if I want to purchase anything, whether it could be a you know a small fruit or it could be a piece of land or house or car or whatever, what is the currency I need? Good karma. Good karma. Good karma for the going to upper parents. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So the Punya, punya is the currency that works in the upper planetary system. There's no other currency. You can't, I can't carry 10,000 pounds or whatever, 100,000 pounds, someone may have more, and carry that money to the higher planetary system and hey, okay, here's the money I've got and you know, I, I can be, I can get an entrance there. You can't. You must have performed punya karma to be able to go up in the higher planetary system. And what is the currency? Well, what is the problem with that currency? If you go to if you go to the higher planetary system, yes, then you have your bank balance. Then it finishes. You have to come back. That's right. Yeah. So that is why it is not a very intelligent deal. So because we you know we 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 had some currency, we go there, we spend it, and we have to then we finish. Let's just try. You go on holidays. You go on holidays for so many days. You have some money that you purchase a ticket. We go there and we spend some time. The time is over, the days are over, the money is over. We come back to the same place. So this, this, and so that's what happens when people perform punya for the purpose of enjoying in the higher planetary system. They, they come back. Um, but Prabhupada explains in this purport that uh, there are different types of sacrifice and this different types of worker. So that means Veda explains varieties of these different types of sacrifices. And they're suiting the individual worker. So there are varieties of people in all, you know, at all levels. And our scriptures are so accommodating that there is something for everyone. So uh, someone who's, you know, in, in the extreme bodily concept, and this is the situation with most of the sacrifices that we're reading here, is mostly to do with either with the body, with the mind, or with the intelligence. This is what's happening. So that's what, in, the, in this verse, Krishna is saying what? Karmajam, so they're performing the work through their 
body, mind, or intelligence. All is a position. So different types of uh, sacrifice is one is demigod worshippers. Then there is also merging into supreme Brahman. So whether what's happening there, someone is someone wants to lose their identity. What is the contribution? So we discussed about the four things. The contribution. What is the contribution? The first one. They perform karma khandas, demigod worshippers. That is the contribution. Yeah. And there's a process, there's a, you know, in the scriptures, in the Veda, the process defined as to how the, the yajna should be performed. You know, so many yajnas people perform for that purpose. And then the result was guaranteed. So that is the process. And uh, what is the contribution? Dravya, sometimes the dravya. And the, you know, there are so many things goes in the, in the fire, sacrifice. And the merging the Supreme, Supreme Brahman means these are the... Um, Mayavadis. Mayavadis? Yes, yes, Mayavadis. And, uh, in the, but in the sense, what are they trying to tell the Brahmavadis? You know, there, there's a slight difference in there. Uh, that we can discuss in another session. But uh, Brahmavadis, they all want to do what? They want to merge in. So what are they offering in there? What is the contribution? The whole, whole self. You know, they, they, they want to lose their identity itself, which is quite dangerous and obviously uh, doesn't last long. But this is this is a, a class of transcendentalist as well. That's the type of sacrifice. And then there is Varnashram type Krishna explained in one verse. And he explains about the Brahmacharis and the Rihastas. The Brahmacharis, what do they do? They offer their hearing and all their senses and the Rehastas offer the senses into the sense of things. So that is what we discussed before. And there is Ashtanga Yoga. And Ashtanga Yoga is Yam Niyam, Asan, Pranayam. Yeah, one. Pratyaha, Dharana, Dhyan, Samadhi. This is uh, Patanjali's. Uh, Ashta, Ashtanga Yoga. Ashta, yeah, the eight limbs of yoga. There's a question here. I'll take it in the end in the chat. Oh, and uh, someone is also contributing in here. Sorry, I'll keep the chat open as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then there is Pranayam. Pranayam is, 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 uh, is mentioned many places. Uh, even here, actually, there are two times when I am coming. Different types of air. There's five, five uh, major air and five minor air. The major air, you know, the the apan, the udan, the vyan, the pran, the saman. Um, different the air going up is is the udan and going down upon breathing in the pran and vyan and saman like which is circulating the, the whole body. So the ayurveda. Uh, manages all this. So someone would say uh, three types of uh, either vata, pitta, kapha and the vata is, you know, Ayurveda also manages the medicines and all that based on how the the air is, uh, you know, imbalanced or something like that. So, um, so this is the, but the yogis who do perform these uh, pranayams, they are able to um, perform in such a way that they can completely stop breathing. So this is also the contribution. What is the contribution there? Life there itself, yeah? And the process is the pranayam. And this is the yogi. And the result is what? Well, everywhere is, is basically, you know, they're all trying to, to perform their sacrifices. And some people have, Krishna also explained in one, in one verse, strict vows of sacrifice of positions. A lot of people do a lot of charity work. You know, whatever they have, they, they, they will have a strict vow. Okay, I will, sometimes the people take a vow to not eat something all their life. And someone would do or um, give something every time they get something or this every day donate something. There's, there's so many things people do. You know, they, they part with the sacrifice, uh, part with the position that they have. And there's this, this uh, Hatha Yogis as well. Krishna also explained that, but yogis do that. All the different asanas, there are, I think, 84,000 asanas that Lord Shiva can do. Lord Shiva is the originator of the asanas. The 
He's the top of Vaishnava and obviously he's the most powerful demigod. And uh, the human performing from asanas, the yoga, and then severe austerities. We have seen some people in the uh, uh, Kumbha Melas. So this people are just raising one hand up there. They, they are, <laughs> very funny. Well, they, they perform is austerity. They just have one hand just like this. I saw one person like that. And he is having, he's been having the hand like this for many, many years. It's almost like, you know, he's deformed. But he's performing austerities for some purpose. And some of them are also Swadhyay, study of scriptures. Rabbiya Swadhyay, scriptures. So there are so many Vedas and people are, um, there is a class of uh, transcendentalists who are into study of scriptures. There's so much to study, you know, there's, it's impossible practically for anyone to be able to complete all of the Vedic scriptures in one lifetime. It feels like that. It's a lot. But there are people who are doing that. So these are the another uh, class of sacrificing or transcendentalists. And there's also pranayama, once again, Krishna explained that. So wh what is the purpose of all these? And Krishna explains in the next verse, uh, 32, oh, sorry, in, in 30. In 30, what Krishna says, of all these sacrifices, what, what do they achieve? Krishna says here, all these performers who know the meaning of sacrifice become cleansed of sinful reactions. So the ultimate objective is so because we are in the material world here, we must have some, some sinful uh, actions in the past. If we were completely cleansed of sinful reactions or reactions, we would, here, we would not be here in the material world. Do we agree? Yes, Prabhuji. There is something. So when we perform these sacrifices or the transcendentalists, they are performing all these different sacrifices, they are becoming cleansed of sinful reactions. Sinful reactions. Yes, that is the purpose. And having tested and active results of sacrifice, they advance toward the super, supreme eternal atmosphere. In the world that was covered yesterday, it says, O best of Guru dynasty, without sacrifice, one can never live happily on this planet or in this life. What then of the next? So sacrifice is a must, Krishna is, you know, is clarified here. And someone who does not perform any sacrifice, which is happening today, if you see, you know, uh, in today's time, there is no concept of sacrifice uh, in the sense the way it is explained in the Veda. And also, there is no training and <laughs> right from the child in the old days, and obviously some of our devotees' children are now doing it, which is so wonderful. In the old days, children... Uh, would learn scriptures by the age of 12. I think they would memorize most of the scriptures. And after 12, then they would start to understand or discuss. So there is a Shavanam and there is Mananam and then Nidhi Asanam. So they would have heard and memorized most of the scriptures by the age of 12. And then after that, they start to, Mananam, they start to analyze that and then they start to you know as they analyze and they start to implement in their own lives that was the process now today if you see the education system we don't want to go there but we know what the situation is there is no time for anything so there's a right from the uh, you have GCSEs and A levels and all respect please don't get me wrong but uh, the, if you see the, the situation literally there is no time in today's day and age there is no demigod worshipping. There is no chance anyone, you know, there, at least I'm not aware of anyone who knows anything about merging the Supreme Brahman. There are people who talk about impersonalism a lot. You know, if you go to India, everyone talks about uh, the impersonalism aspect of the, uh, the scriptures, but they don't really know. They don't, no one is doing any sort of um, uh, uh, performance or any act to be there or merging. No, no one has that intention. One ashram, we know where we got, you know, by um, by the grace of his divine grace, uh, Prabhupada, we have the temple, we've seen the Brahmacharis, and we've seen the ideal Grihastas. Otherwise, outside, there's no one existing like that. 
So in today's time, the point that I'm trying to make is there is no education system, there is no understanding, there is no knowledge. And what to speak of people who have not touched at all, that's one of the reasons we go out and distribute books to, to give this knowledge to, to, to people in the world because there is so much ignorance outside. So, um, so the one, so yeah, this is the, the modern state, which is no sacrifice. So if there is no sacrifice, there is no happiness. There is no happiness because there is sinful actions and reactions going on. And there is, because of that, ignorance. I mean, in ignorance, people live. In ignorance, people perform actions or sinful actions. Ignorance, they get reactions. In ignorance, they get another body. And we, we just carry on and on and on. So this is the situation. To come out of this, we have to understand this knowledge of continental knowledge of serving to Krishna. And uh, then again, what we discuss is once uh, all the sacrifices in one sense are being performed based on the modes of material nature. So guna, guna is the three gunas, mode of goodness, mode of passion, and mode of ignorance. And uh, there are various types of people you know, performing the sacrifices and they have certain tendencies. There is also Purana, there is you know, different types of uh, endemical worshipping. There are so many um, Purana that explain based on the the individual nature, someone may be worshipping one demigod or the other demigod or the other demigod like that. So facility is given to everyone by our scriptures. And um, all those sacrifices eventually is, is a progress towards the uh, the ultimate sacrifice, which is, you know, uh, performing uh, as a service to Krishna. And uh, how this is being developed is mostly, Prabhupada explained a little bit in the, in the purport. Is previous work from Saras. So people, or we develop our uh, various tendencies for many births. So there is some means the what the information that we carried from the previous birth. These are the some colors we carry. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I had to mute some people. There was a lot of background noise. Yeah, um, so so this is the the verse which is you know almost like wrapping. Krishna is now wrapping up the the various types of sacrifices and we discussed based on samskaras and explain uh, based on samskaras uh, people have different tendencies what we have been doing in our previous birth we pretty much follow from there and Krishna has explained in the second chapter any of these types of uh, transcendental activities that, that we perform we, we carry forward to the next birth and we carry for our subtle body as well in the next birth and uh, we, we carry those carry those tendencies. So based on that, we do activities. And, uh, and that's how the, the various types of uh, sacrifices have come into place to, to give facility to everyone. And obviously for what is the sacrifice for the Kali Yuga? Anyone? One who are in Kali Yuga? Nam Sankirtana Prabhu. Nam Sankirtana. Nam Sankirtana. That's, that's well defined. Um, and that is for the intelligent class of people. This is what is defined. Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Keva. Hello, Nanti. Eva Nam. Eva Nam. This is the word that Maha um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains to Sarabhama. Sarabhama Bhattacharya was a very highly intelligent logician. And he had logic, and he was like, he was a, uh, you know, um, uh, Mayavadi, as we said before, and into the knowledge and uh, and uh, monism, what is called monism. So uh, Mahaprabhu explained this verse to him. What is the, the situation of today? Bhagavatam also explains the the, the defects of uh, our defect in in Kali Yuga. So uh, 
Nama Sankirtan is what we need to perform. That is the Yajna for this Yuga. And Mahaprabhu himself has appeared to give the start that uh, uh, Yajna for, for this age and time. As Krishna says in this chapter only, Yada Yada Hi Dharmasya Glanin Bhauti Bharata. So if for that purpose, Mahaprabhu comes in only 500 years ago, not very, very far. Only 500 years ago, he was here. And we are fortunate to then receive his mercy through Srila Prabhupada. So this is what I thought maybe summarized today of, of what has been going on. And starting, I think, after tomorrow, there will be another section in this fourth chapter, when Krishna will start to glorify the transcendental knowledge. So, um, so maybe I was thinking, we have some 10 minutes, can we discuss some questions? I'm gonna go there. Okay. Surbi Mataji has written something. Actually, it's an illusion that most people in KC are aware. In Kali, some aren't aware. The non-followers of KC may be more spiritual and thus aware. Can, can you explain that? Sorry. That's fine. Doesn't matter. You can, you know, uh, okay, I will... We'll try to you can you know you can ask questions. This is what happens. So Arjun asked question to to Krishna. You know this is like somebody how can I ask this question? He did ask. Right? How how did you explain this to Sun God? We are of the similar age. Sun God was here millions of years ago. So any doubt that we have, uh, we must ask and share if we have any knowledge or any corrections. Hello. So, yeah. Go on. Yeah, I was just thinking about awareness, you know, what you were saying, awareness of one's soul, one's self, you know. Yes. People who are new to this and who don't follow, who don't know much about, about this uh, KC group and all that, you know, about uh, who don't know much about uh, scriptures and all that. They also may be uh, aware in some way of their own self, uh, their own soul. They may be yeah. sp spiritual in some way. So I was just uh, contributing, oh, yeah. uh, you know, my thoughts. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hare people, Hare yeah. people not saying that we are the only <clears throat> but people who are aware. All we are saying is we start there once we become aware of our situation and then we become conscious and then we become Krishna conscious when we know the, the nature of this material world, how this has been designed, created, what is the purpose of this world. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do, what it's is the purpose? Of, it's a sense of acceptance that, you know, somebody is there up there, you know, it's a sense of acceptance of uh, divine power above us. This whole thing, you know, either you call it the Krishna or you call it a divine power or something like that, you know. So, and some are, uh, you know, on, on the way to accept that, some are, you know, already there. So, I think it's a journey. Uh, yes, it is a journey. Yes. So I was just uh, contributing yes. my thoughts, <laughs> just typing, <laughs> typing out, you know, as and when you were saying something, you know, in, in, no, no, in thank that you context, so it, it is just, a journey and all yeah. is this it's different. It's basically activity. a re, uh, reformation of self, being more in touch with our soul, you know, understanding ourselves, you know, why we are so sad, why we are happy and why we interact the way we do. It's yeah. understanding of self more, I think, you know, um, yeah. and acceptance, of course, that there is a uh, divine power over us. Yeah. So, so, I was just yeah, yeah, yeah. my thoughts. No, good. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So Hare just Hare. to extend that, so what happens is uh, so there is uh, you know, how do we understand? There is three ways of uh, get, getting any knowledge. And uh, the, what are those three ways? Anyone knows of getting a knowledge? Any knowledge we in in the uh, in the material sense or spiritual sense, so the, the knowledge comes through three. One is prataksha. Prataksha means what we can see from our senses, or what we can experience. Or the second thing is anuman or inference. Yeah. Yeah? So we, what is the inference? So what is the prataksha? So we protection. see something from the eyes, yeah. or we touch and we feel. Okay, this is the knowledge. Okay, I can see. There's a tree outside, or there's a tree there. 
Yeah, that's something I'm relating to my senses. But my senses are limited. That is another aspect. Yeah. So what I can't see is like now we have microscopes and all those things to see the things that my naked eyes can't see. And then there is, you know, there's for example the telescope which is there created to see the stars outside. But it has own, own limitations. So the seeing from the senses we have, there's a limitation. We can only see so much, or we can only understand so much with our own senses. We are limited. Do we agree? Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. And then the second one is Anuman. Anuman. So how do we see? What's the example of Anuman? So I'm sitting inside, window is closed. I can see that the, the leaves of the tree are moving. So that means there is air. Wind. Yeah. Wind. Yeah. There's wind which is blowing it. So that is that means the inference. But another inference is like a, uh, when there is smoke. So if I see smoke, what do I understand? What is it's the inference? Fire. 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 Yeah. But what it's happens sometimes is you see this the lot of smoke. On the mountain, do we see the cloud over the mm -hmm. mountain? What do we see? Mm -hmm. So there is the Anuman also fails because the inference fails there. And there is third is Shabda. Shabda is what? And there are two senses in, in the, for example, you know, Shabda is why did I go to school? So when I go to school, then I, okay, I will do my GCSEs, A levels, then I go to the university. I get a degree, I get a job because someone told me that, right? So if I do this, this happens. This is Shabda. Yeah, do we agree? That's how we get the knowledge from, you know, in these three ways. And yes. there is, yeah, so there is Shabda and then to get the real knowledge has to experience. So, so we can, you know, we can be understanding so many things that there are people aware, everything is correct. The ideal knowledge that comes from Krishna himself is aparashaya. Aparashaya means is above the, the material senses and intelligence. Because we are, and why do we need that? Because we are spiritual in nature. And we are spiritual soul trapped in the body. We are not a body having a soul. We are a soul with a body, having a body. So, so we need to be able to understand what is not matter in a spiritual, we have to understand mm -hmm. some, from someone who is fully spiritual. Who can take us out of the, the you know, there is a uh, say wet sand, what is that, marshland, we get stuck inside, right? Who can pull us out? Who is outside? Can, no one else can pull us out. <laughs> so uh, that's how we need someone who has the transcendental knowledge to pull us out of this situation here. So out of these three, if I, if I may ask, uh, yes. is experience most important because we interact with our senses every day? Yeah. Uh, so, the, those things you explained, you know, Pratyaksha, Anuman and uh, scriptures. So, uh, so scriptures can't be read by each and everyone, you know, it's too deep. Yes. And yeah. to get a good teacher like yourself, I mean, not everyone is so fortunate, you know, to get uh, in contact with, you know, good teachers, actually. No, that is actually, I'm not that, uh, you know, that for, I, I, I tried to find, but I, I just could not get. And oh, so no, I think here now. Is, 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 is experience more important because we so, interact with our uh, uh, yeah, sense yeah. and perception. Okay. And experience okay. is so uh, uh, impactful, you know. Uh, so I think is 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 that of the uh, 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 topmost uh, importance amongst the three. Yes, yeah, so in, in real life, actually, in real life. Okay. Yeah. So 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 Rubanta, So what I was saying, experience is also of the senses, right? The other problem that we have is um, in the in the particular in the Kali Yuga, we have imperfect senses. The experience is through the senses, right? We we can't experience without the senses. But my senses, what I was saying in, in the protection is our senses itself are not good enough for us to give, give for, to give us the right experience. So what we need is the higher knowledge and that comes from the scriptures. When we are told, we are, because why that comes from the scriptures? Because scriptures are coming from Lord Krishna himself. And all the scriptures are proclaiming and this could be a subject by itself and how all the scriptures are explaining the Lord Krishna is the supreme. And mm -hmm. 
how the whole system of you know mm-hmm. how the demigods are working how mm-hmm. krishna is working it's all explained in the scriptures so experience is is good but it is limited but with the same when we have the gyana chakshu or with the shastra chakshu when we see when we uh try to understand our experience with the eyes of scriptures then we understand the truth okay. and in further if you please you know uh, yeah, very that, read, for that you need to read through the text and you know understand have that uh, yeah. ability to understand the text deeply and you know uh, yeah, so somebody who, to teach you you know somebody to teach you that's yeah, it you got it that's the main so, class you know yeah krishna will say that you know as we go on in the verse number 34 tad vidhi prani pate na pari prashne na sevaya so when we approach a spiritual master and we serve them and we inquire humbly you know that service attitude has to be there humility has to be there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of course and with that humility and with that service because he has seen the truth he will part the truth to us so we <laughs> get knowledge from the spiritual master so we need a teacher like we we can't even today children have to go to school to learn so we right. we are we are also children in the in this of aspect of spiritual knowledge so we need a teacher right so that's all so much yeah so in 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 short the main crux of this text is what if you can just explain in in one se- uh, sentence what is the main crux of this whole uh, gita if you can just uh, say uh, if 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 you would like to draw an inference you know to a uh, to an a uh, to a person who is totally new to it so what's one impactful inference that you can you know draw from that the only bhagavad gita the yes yes so bhagavad gita uh, sentences and short the whole inference of this, this all this study everything is is one so we must say that no matter who we are in what body we are in what situation we are we are all seeking happiness Oh yes. Yeah, yes. happiness is our crux of life. Oh, we want to be happy. Yeah. And the crux of Bhagavad Gita is is telling us how we can become happy. That is the crux. Oh dear, yes, yes. Yes. We want to be happy. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah, you just said the words what I was you know searching for. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and experience. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Pranam. Thank you. It was nice talking. Thank to you, you so Thank much. You. Yeah. Please keep coming. Okay yes whatever state of being one remembers yeah that's a, yeah yam yam api smaran bhava this is the verse 6 so whatever we remember at a time of quitting this body that's what we will attain so this is the life uh, a practice you know that we do so we are actually i'm going to speak for two more minutes and then if any more question we can take if we just like we we start our education uh, we do uh, you know first 10 years that's fine then we do our a levels we start to define our career what degree am i going to do i i take that a level subjects define that then based on the degree that i have taken so i could be a, a doctor or a dentist or an engineer or whatever or accountant i define my next few years of life as to what i will be doing in this material world and this process carries on and on you know in one sense we can say uh, we don't know where how long we going to live so this practice of spiritual life is has to be a continuous process because as someone has quoted this verse uh, we have, once we develop that awareness the krishna consciousness when we leave this body we get you know we attain krishna in the next world krishna explained in the eighth chapter when it comes the beautiful verses coming in there but what point i was trying to make is we as we we can actually become little bit more aware and conscious as to what body we are creating ourselves the way we are creating our you know degree or career in whatever we do similarly we are also creating our next body constantly and you can see that people towards the later age they develop certain type of mood you know and they behave in a particular way or they they um, they have some certain tendencies that become more and more uh, predominant and you can see that that's the body they are creating same way like what i am doing now i'm creating that for for tomorrow 
I'm creating another body because my body is constantly dying anyway. So this is very important that how, what we do on day-to-day -day basis, what is our consciousness and to, to become conscious of how are we thinking, you know, the, the, we have the uh, karma clo, the loba, moha, matsa, all these negative emotions which are coming in our mind. So we, we, we understand that. And uh, the crux of the today's talk is really what I wanted to, to say is uh, we become conscious, we become more aware of, you know, um, what on, on moment to moment, how we're thinking, what we're thinking. Is our thinking in line with Sri Krishna's teachings, in line with Bhagavad Gita? And then we develop that way. And obviously the association is powerful in that sense. Um, and then we, when we associate with devotees, we, we, you know, we act like them, we think like them, and then we create our body as devotees. Um, okay, anything else? Oh, there's some J to our karma determines our next body and our next destination. But that, but which bit of karma determines our next body, and which bit of karma determines our next planet? Assume there is human, animal, and plant life in all planetary system. Yes. Yes, yeah, so what this is to J. Yeah, so depending on what we desire and what we deserve, there are two things there. We may be desiring something or we may be deserving based on what uh, what activities we have done. So based on this desire and deserve, we get the next body. And, uh, okay. Sorry, probably spoke a lot. Anyone else? Any questions? Sorry. We've gone three past now, nine. So, um, so we finish for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, it was a bit heavy your technical discussion today. Uh, we didn't have any stories today. So next time. Thank you so much for Thank all. you so much for the class. Thank you. Thank you, Guruji, for the wonderful class. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.